All right, we'll go ahead and get kicked off. I appreciate everybody joining this morning uh, and or afternoon, depending on where you're calling from. Uh, I'm Lance Garms, the Product Marketing Director with Geoforce. And today's webinar is all around Compliance Manager. Uh, although you'll see as we go through this that uh, the application actually does a lot more than just manage compliance related tasks. So uh, let me move on here to just a quick overview of the agenda for today. Um, you're going you're gonna to learn a, a lot about the features and the value of the platform or the application. Um, you're going to get a, kind of a feature demo video that uh, kind of will walk through everything in detail. And then we'll make sure and leave a lot of time at the end for, uh, for any questions that you have. We are recording this session and we'll make sure and send that recording out to, to everyone who's attended. And um, if you have questions along the way, if you'll use the, uh, the question or chat bar uh, that's in your kind of drop down panel, at any point you can type in a question and we'll make sure we get to that uh, at the end of the session. Um, and we'll make sure uh, you've got ample time to get those questions in. So the presenters for today will be Jeffrey Johnson, uh, senior, product, senior Product Manager, Justin Walters, Regional Sales Manager, and Becky Hausman, our Implementation Manager. Um, and they'll kind of walk through different sections of the presentation. Uh, and again, we'll leave plenty of time for questions as we go through uh, when we get to the end. So with that, I will hand it off to Jeffrey Johnson. Hello, everyone. So Compliance Manager, as Lance mentioned, really does do a lot more than um, just compliance. Um, it does allow you to respond immediately to compliance alert, um, alerts with context of the asset location. So what's important about that is actually knowing where the asset is when you need to bring an item into compliance. So say, for instance, it's due for a specific certification or inspection, um, either government mandated or not. Um, you need to know where that asset is so you can actually get to it and perform uh, the inspection that's needed. Um, it reduces your downtime waiting for that equipment certification because you know exactly where it is at all times and can get to it. And you understand uh, when it is um, out of compliance or when it's in compliance. Um, and it doesn't, and it lets you avoid the awkward situation of having an item out in the field where you might have an item out of inspection and as an example it may not be able to be loaded onto a cargo ship or maybe the customer um, chooses not to accept um, delivery of the item because it's out of certification um, it does allow you to audit the equipment locations for inventory and liability management so knowing if it's at a customer site or in your yard if it's out of compliance um, it does enhance your SOX compliance and financial accountability so it can be a part of any official certification program um, and it does reduce the risk of third-party equipment being out of compliance through asset visibility sharing um, in the platform. Um, additionally, it does allow you to upload any specific documentation that you want to uh, keep track of, so you won't have that in two places. So in other words, you won't just be tracking certification yes, no within uh, the Geoforce application. You can actually upload all that documentation, keep it all in one place uh, in case you never ever need to supply that to um, a third-party entity. Um, also, as Lance mentioned, this can be used for things like inspection certifications, um, enhanced maintenance, um, and then also a training needs. So I know some of our customers actually have a need to make sure that their employees stay up on the appropriate training. Uh, and so you can also use compliance for that. Next slide. All right, so what, what differentiates us from some of our competitors? So most of our competitors do not have a compliance um, or certification and training module built into the application. So this is fully integrated um, into the Geoforce Track and Trace application, um, and it allows compliance and safety for all equipments, all policies. Um, additionally, what makes this unique is you don't have to have an asset or a device to actually take um, advantage of compliance. So compliance does work without um, a tracked asset um, in your system. So it can be used thing, for things like people and, and equipment. Um, no device is required for using compliance. It can be used for non-asset compliance, safety and training. So just like I said, you know, for employees. Um, and it does allow you to create your own policies and track those policies. 
Um, we can we definitely when we set you up give you a few examples of how to do that but you're fully able to um, define those yourselves that work within your workflow um, and in fact a little bit later um, we'll actually be showing you how you can do that and how that it can be applied um, and it can help reduce lost revenue right so if you do have items that are maybe government mandated or for other reasons you have to track that compliance um, by reducing the risk and knowing when your items are in compliance or out of compliance or that or that your employees are within training certification guidelines or outside of those guidelines, um, it allows you to bring those up to spec more quickly and avoid fines um, and also supplying that documentation as well. Um, and I'll just mention one more time, this is fully integrated into Track and Trace. Uh, so in the GeoForce application, you're not going to be using two systems to do this. You can do it all in one system, fully integrated throughout Track and Trace, um, both of it as its own module to track compliance, but also within um, the list view and uh, within the asset detail page that you might be familiar with. All right. So I'm gonna not spend a ton of time here because we do have a demo coming up and then um, I believe Justin's going to also answer any questions and demonstrate that in the application as well. Uh, but we are going to uh, just touch very quickly here. So some of the key features here, this is the uh, compliance manager application. You can filter that list to basically see equipment. Um, if it is equipment, uh, if it's tied to an asset, so that serial number of the asset, if it's not tied to an asset, um, you know, you can actually define that asset type as something else. So for, for instance, maybe training, uh, very quickly view the uh, certification documents that are required. And if those certification documents have been uploaded and updated, you can actually see those right in line. Um, and then all of this, if you need to actually export this for a report, maybe to attach to a government entity to, to demonstrate that you're within compliance for either training or asset inspection needs, whatever it might be, you can export that data as well um, to either Excel or a CSV. Um, and then you can either use that for further analysis or to supply it to a third party. Okay. Um, when you are viewing a, a compliance, um, the actual status. So at this point, we've kind of drilled in and you can kind of see, um, you can basically see that, um, um, you know, overall, if you're in compliance or out of compliance on a very detailed view, that green means that you're in compliance. Um, and in this case, the one was black flagged, which basically means, uh, you know, it's it's a, a very important, uh, pro it's very important for you to actually get out to the field to uh, inspect that item because it is out of compliance. And black flag basically means that you flag that as an item that needs to be pulled immediately and that could be because it's either a danger or um, for some other reason, right? So like if it's a cargo container that is damaged and can't hold its uh, specified certified load anymore, as an example, all right? Um, and then viewing the actual certifications, you can actually see these are just examples. We'll show you uh, more accurate examples once we get to the demo. Um, but these are basically uh, very quick examples to see where you can set up different certification types. So in this case, this asset, uh, which is a van, uh, has three different certifications that are required. And you can see that they're all green, but they are due in 102 days. Uh, so one nice thing about the compliance application itself is it will warn you as you begin to approach those um, certification or inspection uh, deadlines. Um, and basically it'll go through a flag progression, which will basically be, you're gonna start off green, um, as you start to get closer, which you define how close that is, as you start to get closer, it'll turn to yellow. And with you, if you're within a few days or past due, it's going to turn red um, to let you know that this is something that needs to be addressed immediately. And that red flag is visible throughout uh, the GeoForce application, both on the map, um, on the uh, list view, and on the asset detail page itself, in addition to any reports where you can export that information as well. All right. And just as a recap, before we move on to the demo, um, this does have an at a glance compliance summary. Uh, so you can get an overview on the dashboard to basically see how you are and how you're um, maintaining certification across all of your assets in your company. 
Uh, it allows you to manage those certification documents for um, you know, any government entities that might come down the road you know, a year or two later and ask to see the certification or inspection. Um, it does have mandatory monitoring as an option, so you can require equipment suppliers to use our system uh, to lower your liability risk. You can schedule any reports in the system or use any of the uh, um, analytics dashboards that also include compliance data. Um, you can use those at any time, schedule those to be delivered automatically to you daily, uh, weekly or monthly, how, however often you choose to receive those. Um, and you can also eliminate logistical bottleneck. And what that basically means is um, if you do have containers that need to be in compliance um, before they're shipped to a customer site, or maybe they're already at a customer site and they need to be inspected, um, you don't have to wait uh, you don't have to find out before it's too late, right? Like you can actually fix that before it gets to the customer side. And then it does allow you to um, provide inventory management. So basically uh, perform audits of your equipment um, and see if your equipment is in uh, compliance or not. Um, or if it's employee training, as an example, it could be uh, monitoring that employee training and making sure that all of your employees are staying up to date on any needed certifications or a mandated training they might have, all right? Great, thank you, Jeffrey, appreciate it. Absolutely. So before we jump into the, the quick demo video, um, I, want, I wanted to hand it off to Justin Walters. He's got some customers that he works very closely with who have used Compliance Manager and have had some some good things to say about it. And, and Justin can share some uh, some specific use cases and ideas. So Justin? Yeah, thanks. So, uh, in the world that I deal with is mainly, you know, offshore CCU. Uh, we have some onshore compliance data that we help customers with. But um, for for a few examples, you know, our customers that have equipment going offshore, um, for those that know, there's various detail oriented uh, lists of requirements that, that, that your, your equipment has to adhere to um, to go offshore for those customers. Um, we all know, you know, Shell could have their own set of requirements that differs from uh, DNV or GOM specs. And with the compliance module, we give you the ability to differentiate between those requirement lists and then apply um, a, 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 a data log of what those requirements are specific to the asset and specific to the end user. Um, you know, Tiger does this really well uh, as an example. You know, for companies that are global and you have to deal with multiple different requirement sets, uh, this is a tool that'll help you be nimble and efficient in getting that equipment ready uh, to, be, to be rented offshore uh, or onshore or whatever your use case is. We all know that you know, when things aren't in line paperwork wise, that equipment can't go make you money. And that's what, we, you know, that's what we're trying to solve here. Great, all right, thanks Justin. And again, if you've got some questions, um, Go ahead and, and feel free to type those in the chat and we'll get to those here uh, shortly after we jump into this demo video and I'm going to kick that off right now and then we'll uh, we'll take questions afterward. Welcome to training on the compliance module on the GeoForce application. Today we will go over how to set up your assets in the compliance tab, configure certifications, put together policies, and run reports. To start, click on the Compliance tab at the top of your screen. The first screen you will see is the Compliance Status screen. This screen will be blank until you set up your assets, certifications, and policies. To get started, let's first set up certifications. Compliance certifications are used in creating rules for your compliance policy. Certifications are paired with compliance types in order to create a rule. The certification screen displays the name of the certification, the short name, which is the abbreviated name for the certification, the description of the certificate, whether the certification is currently in use or retired, and whether or not the certification requires an attachment. 
In order to create a new certification for use in the compliance rule, click on Define New Certification. Start by entering the certification short name, which should be an abbreviated version of the display name. Next, enter the display name. This will be seen when creating the compliance rule or when attaching certifications to the assets. Finally, you can enter a short description if you need to further describe the certification. When you're done, click Save. If you would like to change the display name of a certification, you can click Edit under Actions. Once a certification is changed, it will affect all instances of that certification in the Compliance Profile. If a certification is no longer in use, they can be marked Retired. This will cause them to no longer appear as an option when working with a compliance policy or editing assets compliance status. You can also select Unretired from the Actions section should you need to bring this certification out of retirement. Next, we'll show you how to create compliance types. Compliance types are what compliance rules are applied to in order to make up a compliance policy. They are typically the same type of assets that make up your account. To access, use the drop-down menu to select Compliance Types. The screen will display all currently active compliance types and their description. To create a new compliance type, click here. A new window will pop up. Enter the display name and a short description of the compliance type. We recommend that the display name be a broad category, like CCU, Sling, or Tank. When you're finished, click Save. If you'd like to edit this compliance type later, simply click Edit. To create a policy, start by clicking Policy. A policy is a collection of rules that define the compliance requirements for your equipment. For example, you may have a requirement that offshore baskets of any kind require a lift test every two years. Every compliance rule has three parts. The asset type, in this example, offshore basket. The certification that is required, in this example, a lift test. And the validity or renewal period, in this example, every two years. Your compliance policy is simply all the compliance rules you have defined for your equipment at any given time. To create a compliance policy, click Edit. This screen will display any current policy items you have in place. Click Add Policy Item to get started. Use the drop-down menu to select Compliance Type, the Certification, whether or not the policy item is a requirement or just a recommendation, and the frequency of the renewal period. If this certification will never expire, please uncheck the box. When you're done, click Save. Your new policy item will show up on the list. Repeat these steps until you've added all of the needed items. When you're done, click Apply to add them to the draft policy. This change to the draft policy could take 5 to 10 seconds to refresh. After 10 seconds, please click on the Refresh link. You may now view how the new draft policy will affect your status by clicking Compare Assets. This is where you can see if any of the changes or additions you made to the draft policy will affect the certifications currently on your assets. This won't show much with your first draft policy. However, it is good to check this screen when you're updating your policy later. Once you've confirmed that the new draft policy is correct, click the Activate button. To manage or change your policy, you will need to create a new draft each time. The system will save all of your old policies for record keeping purposes. If you want to view your active policy, you can use the drop-down menus to narrow down the data you want to look at. The next step is to add your assets to the Compliance module. To start, click Assets. Select the assets you'd like to add a compliance type to, and then click Change Compliance Type. Use the drop-down to select the correct type, then click Save. This process may take a few minutes to update. When completed, you can search for specific assets by typing it in the search bar or use the drop-down menu for compliance types. You may have a user that needs to see a different level of data in the Compliance tab than in the rest of the Track and Trace application. To set this up, you will need to create the users who need to see this information here. Please note that there are four permission levels for users, and you can change a user's permission level at any time. To create a user, click Add New User. The system will request a display name, 
an email address, and the language you, you want this user's compliance data to be shown, which is currently English or Portuguese. On the right, click the correct permission level. When you're done, click Save. If you have any questions about what a user's permission level will enable them to do within the application, please contact Help Desk for further clarification. Now that you've set up your assets, users, and policy, you can click on Reports to schedule a report to be sent on the current status of your assets. Simply type a display name for the report, the email address you want the report sent to, and how often you'd like the report sent. When you're finished, click Create Report. You can always edit or delete these scheduled reports in the future. To change some settings for your account, you can click Account Settings. From here, you can make some small adjustments, like changing the account's time zone and language. If you'd like to adjust when the system will change your warnings to violations, or from OK to Warning, you can adjust it here as well. If you wish, you can require the user to add a certificate number before adding an asset certification. You can also choose to enable the use of black flags for your assets. This is handy if you'd like to mark assets that are unfit or unsafe for work. Finally, you can enable Asset Sync. This will automatically change the compliance type of an asset when the asset's type changes in the core application. When you're through making changes, hit Save. When all parts of your compliance policy have been set up, you can use the Compliance Status page as your dashboard. From this page, you can view Serial Number, Compliance Type, the current compliance status of each asset, if it's currently in a name location, and finally, the actions you can take on that asset. At the top, you can search for a specific asset number or use the drop-down menu to look at a specific compliance type. To view the asset certifications, you can select Certifications under Actions. The Asset Status View allows you to see a list of certifications applied to this individual asset, the date the certification work was done, when it will expire, the certification number when applied, the attachment of the completed certification if uploaded, and when and by whom the certification was last updated. To attach a new asset certification, click here. A list of certifications you currently have active in your policy will appear in this window to choose from. You can upload a copy of your certification and add the certification number. Finally, you will need to enter the effectiveness date. When you're finished, click Save. On the right, you can also edit the certification or remove it entirely if it was applied to the wrong asset. You can also send an email about this asset to an email address. If you click History, you can view the entire history of the asset's compliance certifications. When you're done, you can click here to return to the compliance status screen. This concludes the tutorial on the compliance module for the GeoForce application. If you have any questions, please utilize our help site or reach out to our help desk. Thank you for choosing GeoForce. Great, thank you, Becky, for kicking that off. And we, we do have a couple of questions that we're gonna open it up. So if you, if you do have a question, feel free to type that in. And I'll throw this to, to Justin and Jeffrey. You guys can uh, kind of decide how you want to handle this, uh, these first two questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, where are the questions listed? Yeah, sorry. Hang on. I've got a, I've got a couple that uh, came to me through chat. So uh, the first one is, is there a limit to the number of certification types or policies? that can be created. Okay, um, so there's not a limit on the certification types or uh, um, any of the, the cert requirements. Now the policy, just so we all understand, you're going to have one policy, right? Um, the, that policy is gonna encapsulate each um, compliance type and that compliance types requirements so think of it as a hierarchy your policy is your overall policy for all of your compliance types and your all over, overall equipment uh list within that policy it breaks down which 
equipment belongs to which compliance type and what those compliance types requirements are. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. Okay, thanks, Justin. The other question was, and this, Jeffrey, this may be more uh, directed at you, but how long does it generally take to get compliance manager activated? Um, if you mean, you know, from the time uh, you decide to uh, like, you know, once once you talk to Justin and your account manager and you decide to uh, um, move forward with compliance compliance manager, um, it's normally done within a couple of hours to get it activated. The setup of it um, will take you just a little bit of time as um, someone with GeoForce will walk through with you, um, you know, exactly what you want to set up, what policies you need, what required certifications you need, what optional certifications you need. Um, so it'll take a, you know, it'll take a little longer than a few hours to get it set up, but once it's set up, it's pretty uh, um, self-running. Um, so at, from the time you decide to actually add this to your GeoForce account, a couple of hours to get it activated. Um, and then after that, it'll probably take you, you know, a day or so to actually get it all set up and, and going appropriately. Yeah, okay. and I'll, um, I can expand on that a little bit too, just on our side. Once I have a customer that, that wants to move forward with compliance, what we do is like, like Jeffrey mentioned, it doesn't take them long to get that turned on. What I like to do in the meantime is I'll go through with that customer what their use case is and what type of situations they find their equipment in so that we can write up um, a, a preliminary policy uh, bet between you know myself and the customer just to get that out there on paper and we do uh, we're able to do some bulk upload uh, so if you if you're new to geoforce overall we'll get your assets bulk uploaded into the system to begin with and then I will I usually work with my customers one-on-one -on -one, uh, through a web session or in person to get the compliance policy built out the first run. Um, that way you kind of have some hands-on training to to maintain it throughout the life of the policy. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, those are the only two questions that I saw. Uh, if you do think of any other questions, uh, I've listed Justin Walter's uh, contact info, his email here, and, and feel free to reach out to him. Um, he can do a, a more detailed demo or give you a lot more specific information. Uh, on use cases and, and other information as well. So feel free to reach out to him um, with any other questions. And thank you for everybody for joining today. Um, hope you have a great rest of the day. And, and again, don't hesitate to reach out to Justin if, if you think of something else. And we'll be sending out the recording later today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.